bless our worship times. Father, we pray for communion times. Last Sunday, we had communion. It was a glorious time. Christmas Day, we had communion. Christmas Eve, we had communion. Lord, your word says, as often as you do do this, do it in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, whether we do it once a month or twice a month or whatever, whenever we do communion, let it always be special. Let us not ever get complacent with it. Let it be a time to really reflect on what you've done for us on the cross and the promise of your resurrection and our resurrection and the promise of your second coming. Let communion be a rich part of the services that we do. And yes, it's, it's traditional for the church to do that, but Lord, we don't want it to be mundane. We want it to be exciting each and every time. So Father, touch that aspect of our meetings. We pray, Lord, for our prayer meetings like this week. And Lord, this year, we're really going to endeavor to have four prayer weeks during the year. January, April, I think it would be July, and then November. We just pray, Lord, your blessing upon our prayer meetings, these quarterly meetings. We pray your blessing upon our Monday night meetings with Brother and Sister Larios as they conduct that in-house prayer meeting. We pray, Lord, for our Sunday night prayer meetings, live stream, to be effective, to be powerful. Even though we're doing it on live stream, Lord, last year, some of those prayer meetings were really special. And so we pray, oh God, that, that um, you would use the live stream on Sunday nights to really help us to pray together. Lord, also, we're, we're encouraging everyone to pray early in the morning, every morning. And let that continue to be a big part of our, of our ministry here. And uh, let everyone jump on board and, and get involved with that. So thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for water baptisms. We're about due for a water baptism. Lord, these are special times. New Christians get saved. They, they, they read about water baptism. They understand it. It's, it's symbolic of the old man dying, being submerged in the water, coming up again as a new creation. Lord, bless our water baptisms this, coming, this year. Let them be special. Let there be many, Lord, too. Let there be many water baptisms for new, uh, new Christians that, um, that very recently have accepted you as Lord and Savior. Father, we pray for weddings. Weddings are very, a very traditional thing that churches do, but Lord, I would never want to be, uh, go to a boring, mundane wedding. I want weddings to be exciting, to be filled with your spirit, uh, for the couples to be excited and, and to make lifelong commitments to one another. Thank you, Lord, for the wedding on Sunday. That was a beautiful beautiful wedding. Bless uh, Myram and Vickiana and let them continue to be a good example to their generation about the value of, of marriage. But Lord, bless our weddings. Let them be pleasing to you. We pray, Lord, for baby dedications. Lord, this is one of the most joyful things of ministry to dedicate little babies and young children or older children too uh, to you based on the parents' request. And so, Lord, let that continue to be a special time for our church family to experience that and to recognize that as we dedicate children, it's not just the parents. It's not just the mother and the father or, or just the father or just the mother. It's the whole church that's making a commitment to raise up children in a godly environment. Help us, Lord, to do our part in that. Father, we pray for outreaches. Lord, we've been so hindered with COVID and health problems the last couple of years. But Lord, many of us remember Hillstock and those, uh, those outreaches on Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday at church. Lord, they were powerful. Um, hundreds of people would come and uh, all the free things we gave away was phenomenal. But Lord, we pray that this year we'd really get back into doing, planning some outreaches. Even if we do outreaches in the church parking lot for this community, Lord, give us the wisdom. Let us be creative to know how to reach our community, how to reach those right in this neighborhood where the church is located. And so we pray, Lord, for outreaches to be really effective. Father, we pray for funerals. And although funerals are a sad time, we've had many. <coughs> we've had many over the last few years. But Lord, when a Christian graduates to glory, there is definitely an excitement 
and a joy underneath <clears throat> that sorrow. We pray for funerals will be a time to reflect and to rejoice <clears throat> and to share the word of God for family members that may not be serving you. So, Lord, although these are traditional ministries of the church, <clears throat> we pray that they would be very effective and that we would be able to bring life and, and hope into every situation that we find ourselves involved with doing these traditional ministries of the church. Lord, thank you for what you've done in the past, but we pray for 2023 to be really powerful as we continue on as a church family. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right. That's traditional. Acts 11, verse 20. This would be under the category of being creative. Um, in, in Acts eleven twenty, some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. Well, you may not know what that means, but what that means is the Hellenists didn't speak the same language as those in verse 19. They spoke Greek. And those from Cyrene and Cyprus spoke Greek. So they were, they were Christian people that spoke the language of these Hellenist Jews that needed to hear the gospel. So I'm thinking they were creative. They didn't just discard them because they couldn't find someone to speak their language. They got people to speak their language. And so they reached the Jews with the Jewish, you know, with Hebrew, but then they reached the Hellenist with Greek. So with that, we want to pray that we would be a creative body. And there's a several ministries that we're involved with, but for instance, I'll just say, say the first one, young adults. You know, young adults speak a different language. We need to be creative to minister to them at that level. So uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different areas of this one. And uh, so I'm going to ask Brother Charles to come up here and lead us in a time of prayer, as long or short as it takes, it doesn't matter. And then we'll come back, and, and I forgot to do it after the first one. I want to give you a chance, if you want to pray for anything else traditionally, or anything else along the area of being creative, we'll have time to do that. All set? Yeah. Okay. Lord, thank you for all your blessings. Um, please continue to show us your mercy. Yes, um, Lord. Yes, Lord. And give us the ability to be creative, to reach young adults, as the pastor said. Um, we know that that's a hard time in life. So it's very important that you give us the words and give us the ways and means to reach these young adults in times of need. Yes, Lord. We also pray that you help our youth, the future of our world. Yes, Lord. That you help bring the word to these children and help lead them on a path of righteousness. Yes, Children are everything. Um, and if for nothing else, all that we pray for is meant for our children to be joyful, to live healthy lives. It's a common prayer. So with that, We'd also like to reach our seniors, people who have put in their time. Um, we pray that you give us the ability to reach people who are approaching, they're approaching the end. And please give us the ability and the wherewithal to reach these people. Um, when they're needed most. Don't let them be forgotten. It's thank them for everything that they've done for us. So we pray that you give us new ways through arts and drama. We have the play coming up. Um, please let it draw in new people. Yes, let it bring people to your word and let it help to turn some people to the glory of God. 
we pray for the seminars um, and for the outreaches. We pray that you give us ways, new ways, to draw in new people and attract people who are in need of your grace. So please help us reach those people. We pray for people in nursing homes. Um, we pray that they don't be forgotten. People who have been loyal to God and loyal to their families. They deserve our praise and they deserve our prayer. So we also pray for people who are in the most desperate times of their lives. We pray for people that are in prison. We pray that they find new ways to live their lives. That they find a way to be joyful despite the mistakes that they've made. Find a way to repent and become one with the righteous body of God. We also pray that these people know that when you repent and when you make a change in your life, that you are forgiven by God. And they should know that. We also play, pray for people with addictions, people who have lost control of their lives. We pray that they conquer these addictions. We pray that these addictions don't affect their families and they don't affect their children. Again, it all comes back to the children. We pray that these addictions, we pray that you take hold of them, Lord, and that you rip them out of their soul. We pray that you make them healthy and that you help them see the light, that there is only one God and that our Lord is faithful despite hard times, despite good times. We need to be faithful and pray to the Lord for all of his blessings. We thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. about being creative. I just want to give you an opportunity to see Sandy. Yeah, you can do it from, from there. Huh? You create. You are a God that created. You made it us in your image to be creative as well, and I thank you for that. Yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, to protect yes, Jesus. the giftings and the creativity yes, that you've put in every one of us. Yes, it's like yes, presents Lord. all around the church Jesus. that are just waiting to be open, Lord, but help us to protect those gifts and protect that creativity that it would bring honor and glory to you that it would follow your path and it would complete your will. I just pray in Jesus' yes, name because we want in all things that creativity yes, to be brought to point everyone to Jesus, not yes, to Lord. us, but to you, Lord, yes, and Lord. that they will see Jesus through us, Lord, as imperfect as we are, but maybe in yielding that gifting yes, and protecting Jesus. that creativity Hallelujah. that you would be glorified and it would do the work you set it out to be and that the enemy would not be able to rob it or mm. taint it yes. or spoil it yes, or Lord. put us down so much because we feel guilty that we don't even do the creative things anymore. He would love to do that mm. because he wants to shut us up mm. and he doesn't want that beaming light to shine on Jesus. We just pray that everybody, Lord, would realize that. Yes, yeah, when you don't feel like doing it or you Jesus. don't feel worthy enough, repent. Come back to the Lord. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us and heal us and then give that gift back to him and he'll use it more, better, but within the protection of him and his word for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to pray about that or about the traditional aspects? Okay. 
Alrighty. Those of you at home, I hope you're uh, feeling the prayers over the live stream. Okay, we're in, in Acts uh, chapter 11, verse number 21. And the topic here is to be uh, evangelical. So verse 21 says, The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. I just want to say, you know, we're a busy church, and we will continue to be busy with whatever we're doing with, with food or, or clothing or helping people through the winter or whatever we're doing. But ultimately, there has to be a sense of urgency that we want to lead people to Jesus. I mean, we want to feed the poor and whatever, but we also want to lead them to Jesus. So uh, the church here was evangelical. In the back of their mind, they were always trying to think of a way to lead someone to Christ. So I want to have prayer over these areas of our ministry. Uh, so I need a volunteer to lead us in this. Anyone? Josh, come on up. Now, those of you at home, please uh, continue to pray with us. You kind of get the flow here? Yeah, so these are the topics, so just feel, feel free to, you know, elaborate. Okay. Heavenly Father, I say thank you for this time to yes, be able to uh, go in the house, house of Hallelujah. the Lord and pray and able to uh, just... Um, just pray for new life and able to also just pray that um, we're able to to be um, to evangelize and share the gospel. And um, I also want to pray for street evangelism. I know ministries like Common Ground are doing like uh, outreach to the homeless. And I pray that we are able to do the same, able to uh, um, reach out to people that desperately need you. And I pray, pray that in your name, Lord, and um, whether it's a ministry we're able to do to to go out or to give out food or, sh or clothes, able to just most importantly find their way to, to spread the gospel for them, able to know that they desperately need Jesus. Um, I also want to pray for the altar calls. I pray that they will strive out in your name, Lord, and I pray that that, um, that ministry will strive in your, in your name, Jesus, and able to uh, just continue to do so and um, We'll be able to evangelize on, on that and uh, also want to pray for the lifestyle uh, lifestyle evangelism. And I think when it comes to ministry here in the church, is awesome. But as us individually, I pray that our life is all about when it comes to, when it comes to sharing the gospel and um, able to continue to do so. And uh, um, I think what, it doesn't matter, not just here in New Life, but also in our workplaces or schools or anywhere else we go, we go. Um, we able to find be a witness to that, and able to find that time to um, to maybe just talk about Jesus with our coworkers or a boss, and able to kind of get the get a, take a step of faith and be bold and able to to share that at um at our workplaces and also even at, at our homes. Maybe some people in our families don't know Jesus at all, and I just want to pray that in your name that um, whether it's my family or Pastor Rick's family or everyone else here at New Life's family that able to, that don't know you that we able to take a step of faith and um, share that need, what they need most, and that's you, Jesus. And um, and uh, I just wanna um, just pray for my family in general. I just wanna, I pray that my family will definitely come to know you, and uh, especially with my grandmother in the hospital. I just, uh, it's just a hard time for my family and I, and um, say, but thank you for still being good, even though even though that some of them out, out on the streets or my, fam my family in the hospital, that, Maybe they might not know you, and they choose not to. You know, it's the, the, the fact is that you still love them regardless. It's just um, a miracle in itself. And I just say thank you for giving this opportunity to be here at New Life and everyone else here to to evangelize. And that's really what it's called all about. We're here to be disciples, and we're here to make disciples. And I just say thank you um, for giving us time to do that in your name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Praise you, Lord. Father, I do pray along these lines that, uh, that we would always be an evangelical-minded ch church, that everything we do would have a sense of presenting the gospel and, and, and posing the question, would you like to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? So, Lord, help, help us to keep that in our mind and in our heart as we move forward this year, no matter what we do. Um, and Lord, I want to pray specifically for this Sunday as uh, hopefully, prayerfully, uh, many loved ones and 
relatives and friends will come into the church to watch the kids play. And Lord, let, bring them in. We don't, we don't care how they get, end up here. Bring them in. But Lord, when, when it's all said and done, when the altar call is given, let many hands go up that, yes, I want to receive this Savior that the kids are talking about in this play. So Lord, let that be our theme throughout the year. Uh, we're doing, we're doing, we're, you know, we're, we're busy, but let us be busy about the most important thing, which is presenting the gospel and then posing the question in a delicate, sensitive manner, would you like to receive this Christ? Help us, Lord, with that. Help us, Lord, with that. Anyone else want to pray about that? You can stand up there if you want. Hello. Dear Lord, um, I want to pray... Um, in in this light of being in, in evangelical uh, to re outreach to the lost is that you give us uh, the the zeal of Christ to go after the lost Lord just like the Apostle Paul Lord God he went from one place to another place preaching the gospel Lord God saving many uh, establishing churches Lord God and uh, then going back and seeing how things were going, Lord God, and righting the wrongs that the, uh, the church has tripped over, Lord God. Help us to have that zeal in this church, Father God, to do your will, to go after the lost, Lord God. Whether, whether we're at work, whether we're uh, driving, we're on vacation, or wherever uh, we go, Lord God, in a restaurant, anywhere Lord God and even in work Lord God at home and work in your job Lord and um, we we have all opportunities Lord Facebook Lord God telephone Lord God we we have an opportunity Lord to show the light of Jesus Christ to others Lord God help us to have that purpose in mind Lord God when we reach out to people and talk to people even the close people, our, our family and our friends and our cousins and relatives, Lord God. May, may we have that purpose, Lord God, when we, we may have them over for a cookout or for a dinner, Lord God, or just to watch a, a, a sporting game, Lord God. May we, we uh, go down that conversational road, Lord God, about Jesus Christ, Lord, and about the blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and his great love, Lord God for the lost, Lord God. We know that not everybody's gonna be saved, Lord God, because that's what you said, Lord God, but you did die for everybody, you did, Lord. Doesn't matter how old, how young, rich, or poor, Lord God, and um, it doesn't matter where you live, Lord God. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, may you give us that spirit of evangelism to outreach to anybody that is willing to hear, Lord. Let them have the ears to hear what you have to say, Lord. Use us as willing vessels, Lord God, to reach out. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Just waiting for a couple of prayer requests here. So if you're on live stream, you have a request, let us know. I keep losing my connection over here. So Pamela's trying to keep me posted here. Okay, let's pray for these that came in before we go farther. Father, we pray for our brother Jerry tonight who has a head cold. Lord God, bring healing to him in the name of Jesus. We pray it's nothing worse than that. Uh, let him be well, oh God, let him be well. Let him get a good rest tonight and uh, let him be able to get back to work. We pray, Lord, for Alinda, or Alinda's friend, Catherine, uh, in the emergency room for detox for out from alcohol. Father, we pray for Catherine, Lord. This is a serious issue. Let her be well physically. Let her get the medical help that she needs to, to detox uh, medically without any undue stress on her heart. But, Lord, above all that, we just pray for her salvation, Lord, that you would fill her, her spirit with living water, with your Holy Spirit. 
that she would not be addicted anymore, that she would fill that space with your love and with the word of God. Help Alinda to know how to minister to her as well. And Lord, also I want to pray for um, Millie Cobbett, um, this healing. She was complaining about uh, stomach issues. Lord, there continues to be a lot of sickness floating around, but we call upon your name, Lord, that you would bring the healing that's necessary in the body of Christ. So let Millie sense your presence with her now. Let her be well. Let her be able to sleep well and get up tomorrow feeling so much better. And Father, I want to pray for my family. I just found out uh, my brother and his wife and uh, their oldest daughter all have COVID. And so we pray for healing for them in the name of Jesus. And um, incidentally, they happen to be visiting with my mom th this past week. So we pray protection over her who just got over COVID. Lord, uh, heal the family. Heal those that are sick. Uh, let them be well in the name of Jesus. Let no one else get it. And uh, Lord, not only my family, but anyone else in the church or in the community that has COVID, we do pray for divine healing from that in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go back into uh, Acts chapter 11. Uh, Acts chapter 11 and verse 22 says this, The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. Now, that may not mean a whole lot to anybody, but it's an important verse, because what was happening was, you know, Jews were reaching Jews, and the Hellenists, were, the Greek-speaking Hellenists were uh, reaching the, the uh, Greek-speaking Jews, and uh, they were evangelistic. But this verse tells us in verse 22, news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. They were accountable to their, their covering, and their covering was in Jerusalem. So I want to pray that, uh, that we would be accountable to our denomination, the Assemblies of God, um, that the church will be accountable to the elders and the pastor, the pastor, and also accountable to one another. It's, it's not, it's not, I don't want to say wrong, it's definitely not wrong. It's healthy to be accountable, to keep us in check. So in this case, the elders came down to make sure everything was good, and it was. So who'd like to pray for this one? Bruce? Come on up here. So we're in Acts 11.22. The topic is uh, being accountable. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we serve a good God. Lord, you're a God of order. Father, we thank you that, Lord, you have everything in order, Lord, even going back to Genesis, Lord. Lord, when we look at Genesis and what you, you designed each and every day, Father, you are a God of order. You set things in place according to their date and time. Father, we thank you, Lord, the book of Numbers, Lord God. You're a God of order that puts things in order, measured to the minute detail, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father, that in the church you have orchestrated leadership, Father. Your word says that you gave some to be leaders and teachers and apostles. God, we thank you. That, Lord, you said it that way. You established infrastructure and organization within the church, Father. God, we thank you that, Lord, we belong to the Assemblies of God and that, Lord, there is a, a structure and an order to how we do things, Father. Lord God, that there is accountability. There is, there is layers of accountability at the local, the district, Lord, even at the national level, Father. And, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have uh, allowed people to uh, rise into uh, certain positions of leadership within the church, within the, the, the denomination, Father, Lord, to, to keep things uh, on point, and Lord, accountable to scripture and biblical precedent, Father. God, we pray, Lord, for our, 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 our local, our district, our national, Lord, even our global Assemblies of God leadership, Lord. God, we pray a covering over this denomination, Father. Lord God, that we would never allow, Father, Lord, the world to slip into what we preach and teach, O oh God, that, Lord, we would remain biblically based, O oh God, Amen. that, Father, we would, we would adhere to the foundational doctrines of our, of our faith and of our, our beliefs, O oh God. Yes. 
Father, we pray, Lord God, for the local church, Lord, that, that God, you would raise up the, the right board members, the right elders, the right leadership, oh God. Yeah. Father, even now as we prepare for the annual business meeting, Father, Lord, appoint those, Father. God, anoint those and, and appoint those that should be in positions of leadership, Lord God, on the board. Lord, Father, we thank you for, for other positions, Lord, Sunday school teachers and children's workers and, and, and young adult leaders and youth leaders, oh God. Father, raise up into positions of authority in the church, Father, people that adhere to those biblical standards, Lord. Father, that are accountable unto the leadership, O oh God. Let there be accountability in the local assembly, Lord, not just this church, but in every church. Let people submit themselves, Father, to the leadership that has been placed over them, Lord. God, your word refers to it as the sheep and the shepherd, O oh God. And Father, while we know you are the great shepherd over the church, Father, you have appointed pastors and shepherds over the local flock, Father. And God, so many times, Lord, people come in, they get saved, but they buck the system. They don't want to submit to authority, O oh God. Father, we pray, Lord, that God, as, as your word says, that with everything according to us, let us live at peace with others, O oh God. So, Father, let there be a submissive spirit within the church to, to, to submit to the authority, Lord, of the pastor, to submit to the authority of the Holy Spirit, and to ultimately to submit to the authority of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Father. Lord, we pray, God, for accountability prayer partners. Lord, that you would raise up accountability partners, men with men, women with women. Lord, God, ac accountable to a men's leader, to a woman's leader, O oh God. Father, let there be accountability brother to brother and sister to sister, O oh God. Lord, that we would carry one another's burdens. Lord, your word says to, to bear ye one another's burdens, O oh God. And Father, we thank you that we can be accountable one to another. Lord God, not, not lording it over each other, but Father, accountable. Lord, holding each other's best interests at hand, O oh God. Lord, praying for one another, counseling with one another, bringing one another to the foot of the cross, O oh God. So Lord, we pray that for 2023, Lord God, we would see a, a new level of accountability rise up within the local church, Father. God, we thank you for the, for the, uh, the example and the precedent, Lord God, in, in, in Acts that was just read. And God, may we be like-minded and follow suit in that, in that endeavor. Lord, we just thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Anyone want to add to that prayer? About being accountable? Okay. I'm going to pray for a couple more requests that came in. Father, we lift up Bill and Esther Larios tonight. Lord, just healing for our brother and sister. Uh, Esther's throat, Lord, has been an issue for over a year now. We just pray for healing. Uh, Brother Bill has some issues with uh, not really sure what it is, his back or his legs. Lord, we just pray for divine healing in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Patty Stauffer to be well in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for Caroline uh, Gregan and all the kids in the kids' play on Sunday to be healthy and strong. Lord, Caroline has been really hit hard these last two weeks. Strengthen her and encourage her. And let her be really healthy and strong on Sunday to uh, direct the play. Father, also I want to pray for uh, Willie Perez's mom, Betty. Uh, just continued healing in her. Uh, let her have good night's sleep. And uh, let her sense your presence with her, Lord. And also their relative, Charlotte, that's in need of prayer. We pray for divine healing for her as well. So thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're back in Acts <clears throat> chapter uh, 11, making our way down. Oh, this is a really good one. In Acts chapter 11, 23 to 25, so they, they, the, the leaders from Jerusalem came down to Antioch, and uh, it says in verse 23, when... Uh, Okay, verse 22 says, they sent Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God. I remember preaching on this for a while. How do you see the grace of God? It's not like, well, uh, I was going to say it's not tangible, but it is tangible in a way. If you have a spiritual eye, you can see the grace of God at work. 
people getting saved, people getting, you know, changing their lives, and people loving on each other. But he was aware. He saw the grace of God, and he was glad. Hallelujah. I think I said on Sunday, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And there needs to be a little joy in the house of the Lord, right? And so when he saw the grace of God, uh, you know, uh, contrary, he wasn't critical. He wasn't saying, oh, that was not serious. He was just glad that God was moving. They picked the right guy to go up there. Barnabas, his, his name means encourager. And he's definitely an encourager. But uh, anyway, he was glad. He encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. We need that in the church. We need someone to be an encourager that will just kind of, you know, quietly maybe come along somebody and say, hey, man, brother, you can do this. You know, I'm praying for you. Um, I'm in this struggle with you, but I see God's moving in your life. But to be an encourager is really important. Uh, Verse 24 says, "For, for he, Barnabas, was a good man. We need some good men. Good to see some good men in the sanctuary tonight. Amen. But he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. You see how when you're positive and hopeful and, you know, encouraging, people are attracted to that and they're attracted to the Lord. And a great many people were added to the Lord in that setting. Verse 25 says, then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to look for Paul, look for Saul which is a whole other little ministry that was going on. But anyway, I want to take a few minutes to pray for encouragement in the body of Christ. I don't want to be the pastor of a negative, complaining, discouraging church. (laughs) I want to be a pastor of a a lively, excited, encouraging church. And, uh, hey, we try our best, but, you know, we need the presence of God to really make that happen. And, of course, in this day and age, There's a lot of reasons to be concerned and maybe not so enthusiastic with health issues and money issues and relationship problems and everything else. But we serve the living God. You know, we're we're more than conquerors. We have the victory. Let's get our eyes off of the world and onto the Lord who's blessing us and taking care of us and enriching our lives with his presence. I would pray for a couple of Barnabases to arise in the church to be encouragers in the church. And it's different than coming from the pastor. The pastor can be an encourager, but that's the pastor. We just need regular old people that come into church that are encouraging one another you know, to continue on in their walk with the Lord. So I have a, I have a couple of things here to, to pray about. So who'd like to pray for this topic of encouragement? Alan, come on up here. Take your time and let's get into this. Amen. Actually, I love this. Good. I love this. Hello, Hallelujah. church out there. Um, just want to let you know, encourage you that <laughs> Jesus go. Christ loves you and the church loves you. Amen. And uh, we love your gifts that you bring and you share when you come into church. Okay. Um, so I want to pray uh, uh, to encourage people to use positive words, Lord. I just pray, Lord God, that uh, we speak rightly to people, Lord. We lift them up, Lord God. And and when we look at them, Lord God, and people that come in and come across us, Lord God, in the body of Christ, Lord God, that we encourage them and recognize their gifts and uh, acknowledge the great work that they're doing with the gifts that God's given them, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you will cultivate the gifts in the body of Christ, Lord God, encourage. Let us all encourage one another, Lord God, in our gifts that you have given us, Lord God. All of us have unique gifts, Lord God, that comes from the Father above, Lord God. When we became born again, Lord God, God poured out his spirit upon us to give us gifts that we are to flow in, Lord God. So I pray, Lord, and I encourage the church, Lord God, to have those positive words to speak to others, Lord God, to encourage, to uplift, to build up the church, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, and this goes into uplifting the spirit, in the spirit, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, um, 
to talk in the spirit, Lord God, to speak in the spirit, Lord God, to lift people's um, countenance, Lord God. If we recognize somebody is down, Lord God, who is going through troubles, Lord God, that people will come up aside of them, encourage them, that uh, and uh, use scripture verses, Lord God, and words of encouragement to, to uh, let them see beyond what they're seeing in front of them, Lord God. Help them to see, Lord God, what they are in Christ, Lord God. You, we are all created in the image of Jesus Christ, Lord God. We're not a mistake, Lord God. You, you knew us before the foundations of the world, Lord God. You knew us, Lord God, and you gave us a choice to follow you, Lord God, and you are faithful to finish the great work that you started in us, Lord God. So help us to encourage others, Lord God, that are going through a tough time spiritually, Lord God, and that we recognize it, Lord God, and that, that we come, Lord, with that encouraging spirit, Lord God, your Holy Spirit, to touch them, Lord God, to lift them up, Lord God, whatever the situation may be, Lord God. Father God, I just pray for encouraging words, Father God, not negative words in the church, Lord God. I rebuke the spirit of negativity, Lord God. We have plenty of it in the world, Lord God. We hear it in the news, Lord God. We hear it uh, sometimes from people at work, Lord God. We hear it in the stores, Lord God. We, we ask, Lord Jesus, that your encouraging word, Lord God, would be uh, spoken in the body of Christ, Lord God, and also to the lost, Lord God, that we would give words of encouragement, of salvation, Lord, and hope and faith to others, Lord God. And, and also, Lord God, these words of encouragement would uh, strengthen them, Lord, and, and uh, increase their faith, Lord God, in you, Lord God, so that may we walk on firm ground, Lord God, you are the rock of our salvation, Lord God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, Lord God. And we shall rest in you, Lord God. And you will encourage us, Lord. Help us to go back to the uh, book of Psalms, Lord God, where there's a lot of words of encouragement. King David encouraged himself, Lord God. When, when he was down, Lord God, he started to meditate upon your word, Lord God. And he built himself up. And by the end of the time, uh, the end of the psalm, Lord God, he was filled with power and strength and faith to go on and to move on, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that that same spirit, Lord God, be in the church, Lord God, to help others, Lord God. And Father God, I pray for a Barnabas uh, ministry, Lord God, of encouragement wherever we may go, Lord God, that we we walk in spirit and truth, Lord God, always being ready, Lord God to speak something to somebody, Lord God. A word of encouragement. God bless you. Jesus loves you. And uh, the, Lord, the Lord knows what you're going through. He hears you, Lord God. And, and let people know that their prayers are not um, prayers that fall to the ground, Lord God, that you hear every word, Lord God. Help us to be like Barnabas, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to encourage the church, even though when things look uh, chaotic in the world, Lord God, the church is built on the rock, and that's you, Jesus Christ. And Lord God, and nothing that comes against the church would, would, um, would make it fall, Lord God. We will stand and prevail, Lord God, through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing our prayer, Lord. Thank you for the word of encouragement, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that encouragement always is in the church, always in the church. And wherever we go, we, we're just a oozing with encouragement to others in Jesus' name. Look for our brother James, his right knee, uh, heard a pop behind his kneecap. We just pray, Lord, for healing and strength. Uh, let him be well. Let that not be a serious issue, Lord, but touch him. Thank you that he and Danica came back from their vacation. And uh, thank you they had a great time. But Lord, bless them now. Take care of them and take care of that knee in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for... Um oh, okay. 
Uh, Father, we just pray for anyone else in the church that's dealing with some serious sicknesses, whether it be cancer, respiratory issues, um, headache, uh, sinus problems. Um, we pray, Lord, for our dear sister Katie that's dealing with uh, gastroparesis. And Lorinda is also dealing with a, a stomach issue. Lord, bring healing to our sisters in the name of Jesus. We pray for Billy Kitteridge, Lord, again tonight. Just continue healing for him. Thank you that the cancer is gone from his body. Hallelujah. Bless him. Let him continue to, to recover. And uh, be with Doreen as well, Lord. Strengthen her. Encourage her tonight. We pray for, for Sandy Whitney, Lord. Um, thank you that the cancer seems to be out. And, and we thank you for that. Let her, let, her, let her recover from that surgery she had. And uh, we pray for some continued good reports uh, she's still being seen and tested and so forth. But Lord, bless her. We pray for the salvation of her husband and her family in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for Diane Chase. We pray for Diane Rossetti. Uh, we pray for, Lord, anyone. I'm, I'm probably going to forget somebody. But, Lord, we just pray for healing in the body of Christ. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go back into uh, Acts chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. I'm going to ask uh, Sandy if you would come and pray over this in just a second. But um, after Barnabas left to go get Saul, we read, In those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them was named Agabus. He stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Uh, so I want to, let's see, um, yeah, so I want to pray for the prophetic voice to arise. You know, the, that, uh, that we would, well, and we are, I mean, we're open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, a word, interpretation, a prophetic word, etc., but also through preaching, through teaching. There needs, we need to have a, that prophetic uh, quality to what we're saying. And um, I would say a prophetic voice is characteristic of a New Testament church. And we try to be a New Testament church. We believe in the gifts. We believe that nothing has changed from those days till now. We're still in that same age of grace and uh, we're still in that same period of, of history where the Holy Spirit at, at, is at work. And until Jesus comes back, that's going to continue. But we need to have the prophetic voice alive and well. So, Sandy, would you come and pray for that? Thank you. Here's a little. I just wanted to say, too, about prophetic, one thing is your testimony. Testimony is seeds of the prophetic. You don't know who, when you give your testimony or you tell about the good things God has done, that there's somebody sitting there or hearing it, and there it just comes alive in them. That prophetic, from something that maybe God said about them or something like God's going to say. So don't forget about that. Share your testimony. Speak to people. God can use you prophetically just by giving your testimony or just by telling about the good things God's done. It doesn't have to be a, oh, thus saith the Lord, you know. <laughs> so let's remember that. Lord, I just thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, and that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. You haven't left us without a comforter, Lord, but you have given us the Holy Spirit with all the gifts, Lord, and all your strength and power and who's part of the Godhead, Lord, and who is here among us, living in us and working among us. Even when we don't know and understand what's going on, he knows. And Lord, I just pray right now that the prophetic voice that the Holy Spirit has would come through in us, Lord, in teaching, in singing, in our gifts, Lord, in Sunday school, 
in reading the Bible and what we're reading through your word, Lord, but also in our testimony and hearing about the good things that you've done. And as we make, let your light shine in us, so that it becomes a light and that prophetic voice can be heard, Lord, that people will recognize when they hear it that it is you speaking to them in that area where it's quiet and private and that nobody knows about but the Holy Spirit who hits a bullseye every time. He doesn't miss. He knows what he's doing, and that word is not going to come back void. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this voice. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Lord, for your church, that we can be a light, like a, like a lighthouse, Lord, shining in the darkness, warning people of the rocks and the crashes that's going to come and make their soul shipwreck if they continue that way. Lord, I pray that prophetically, Lord, what prophecy is is telling us of things to come, and that's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit. He tells us of things to come. And help us, Lord, to listen and to go in that way as a light shining in the darkness of the future that we might not know or understand, but that he's trying to show us. Prophets are... They're ones that stand on the wall and they see what's coming and they warn. Help us to listen to the true prophets, Lord. Help us to be able to recognize easily any false prophets. And Lord, you said that your sheep know your voice. Let us know your voice and know when you're speaking to us through this prophetic voice because it hits us and we know in our spirit the Holy Spirit witnesses, bears witness with it. In Jesus' name, pray a hedge of protection over any prophetic words that have been spoken over anybody. Let them come to pass, Lord. Let this be a turning point in everyone's lives that's hearing this, that the prophetic word in 2023 would start to blossom and grow and bear fruit, and it would bear much fruit for the kingdom of God. We pray in Jesus' name that others would hear and be drawn to you and that seeds of the prophetic would be burned and born into their life and you, Holy Spirit, who has all the giftings of Jesus anyway, is the ones who will bring it to pass in our lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. We can trust you and we do trust you. And we thank you for how you lead us, even when we don't understand it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Sandy. Hallelujah. Lord God, I want to lift up to you. Uh, I want to lift up uh, Lisa Jones' dad to you, Lord, that's sick with COVID, had to cancel his trip to Italy. Lord, touch this man. I remember meeting him. Good man, Lord. Touch him, heal him, strengthen him, encourage him. Uh, give Lisa the right words to say to help him along the way. Let him be well. Let it not be really serious. Let him get back on track really soon, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, regarding the prophetic voice, Lord, oh, God, again, on Sunday, Lord, as our kids minister, and they have a good time presenting the Christmas story, even though we're after Christmas, but bless them, Lord. Let the, let the young voices be a prophetic voice to proclaim the things of God. And uh, let everyone's heart be, be tuned in to what saith the Lord during that play. So, Lord, we, we really uh, entrust it into your care and pray that you would do something radical through, that, through the kids and through that play. Lord, on this first week of the year, speaking of a prophetic, a prophetic voice, we pray, Lord, that throughout this year of 2023, we would be so aware of the prophecies coming to pass. And we would be so aware that you are speaking to the church today through your word and through many different other things as well. Let us discern the times, Lord. Let us discern what's going on in the world with everything the way it is. It's just so, everything seems to be so intense right now with health, with money, with the political system, with with uh, travel. Lord, it seems like every time I get on the road, there's so many people on the road that are not at peace. They're aggressive. 
Lord, there's just, there's just something going on in our world. Give us a prophetic eye, Lord, to see and understand. In fact, Lord, we were praying the other two nights this week that as Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus, that you would give us a, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. You would give us, give us the, the church, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And Lord, that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we would see and discern things with a spiritual eye. So let, it, let there be a prophetic voice. Let there be a prophetic eye to, to see and understand what's going on in the spiritual realm. And so, Lord, when we, when we run into people that are so disgruntled and so angry and so bitter, let us look beyond what we see and realize there's something else going on in this person's life. And so we pray, Lord, that we would be equipped to minister your love, your grace, and your peace to, a, to an unruly world in which we live. But Lord, let us have that sense of, of the prophetic upon us that we could discern the times where we are and discern the people that we're around, maybe that we work with or that we shop with or that we, we meet on the road or whatever. Let us discern what's going on and let us always give a good a solid defense of our faith uh, with the understanding that, you know what, this could be that person's only time to hear a clear presentation of the gospel. So help us, Lord, with all of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was looking on my phone just now, and I see David Brissett is online. I, David, I hope you're still online. I, I don't have your phone number, David. I wanted to call you for about a week, and I don't have your number and I, I don't even have your mom's number. Well, I have your mom's number, but no one answered today. So, David, if you can, get a hold of me or get a hold of James and uh, pass on your number. I'll give you a call. Okay. Everybody doing okay? Ready to pray again? Okay, Acts 11, 29, and 30. So, then the disciples each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did, and they sent it to the elders, or sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. I would classify this as they were generous. I don't know that anyone told them to take an offering. It doesn't say that. They just felt like they needed to take an offering and bless some people with it. So I think there's something that can be said about a church that's generous. We have all those missionaries to support over there. We have a lot of needs in the church. But anyway, I want to pray that we would be a generous body of believers. Um, so there's a couple of things here. Uh, so who would like to, uh, Charles, I think it's probably your turn. So be a little creative, brother. We have a little outline, but you need to kind of embellish upon it because it's, you know, you just read it and lead us to the Lord. Sounds good. All right? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, I'd like to thank you first and foremost for all the prayers tonight. Yes, Lord. Um, Hallelujah. Some moving words. So thank you. we thank you for speaking through us. We thank you for helping us move others' lives. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. We ask that people realize the benefits of church and the benefits of the congregation. Yes. Um, that people realize how much good work is being done. Yes. Um, and we ask, Lord, to help bless people financially, emotionally, um, in, in every way possible yes. so that they can help support the church yes. um, in all the things that the church does. Uh, we pray that the church um, has the ability to pay their bills, to keep the lights on. Yes, we pray that its members are financially taken care of in a way in which they can give back to the church. Um, and that those who can't find other ways to give back. 
we ask and we pray, Lord, um, that we have the ability to spend more money making a difference with missionaries across the world. We pray that your word will spread and that your joy and your goodness will spread. We pray that giving as a whole um, would increase. We pray that it would increase because you've allowed it to increase. Uh, we all walk on a path that you've set out for us. We walk on a path that you've already predetermined. Um, and we have faith that you will keep the church strong and that you will keep the church financially taken care of so that they can continue to spread the word and they continue to change people's lives in a better way. Please, Lord, help us be financially stable. Help our families be financially stable. Help us provide for our children and help our churches have the ability in the future to continue to spread the word to our children so that we can keep keep the promise. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I just want to pray over this topic. Patty, I'm going to call on you in just a second for the next topic. Okay? Which you don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to tell you in a second. All right. Father, thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the blessings. Thank you, Lord, that we got through 2022. Um, and we, we were caught up on all our bills. So praise the Lord for that. But Lord, as we, as we pray about being generous, um, I, I ask you, Lord, bless people in the church to, uh, you know, just to bring in income so that they could be a blessing to others. Let our church have an excess that we could pour out in our community. Lord, so many, over the holidays, or really all the time, people call looking for assistance with their heat bill or their rent or whatever, car troubles. And Lord, it would be wonderful just to be able to give some money away to bless people. And we, we do that, but we want to do more of that. But Lord, as we're able to, we, we'll do it. We just ask you, Lord, put it upon our people's hearts to, to be generous. But we ask you, Lord, that you would allow people to have something to give. Uh, it all comes from you anyway. So we pray that your blessing would be upon us, that we could be a blessing to others. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Okay, the story of the uh, Antioch church continues in Acts 13. So we're following the Antioch church, in case anyone missed that. And so in Acts 13, the story picks up. And uh, we read something very interesting. I preached on this a few times over the last several years. Um, it's a really important aspect of the church in America. It really, anywhere, but especially in America. But it says, in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of, of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. And so, okay, they had these five different people, but the topic would be diversity. These guys had nothing in common, folks. <laughs> they were different people. Uh, if you go through it, Barnabas was a Jew, uh, probably a, a regular type of a Jewish person. Simeon, who was called Niger, meaning black, was probably from either Africa. He had northern Africa, I believe. Lucius was from Cyrene, which is a, that's also northern Africa. That could have been like an Arab type of a person or black. Menaean is a Roman name, and he, he had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, which tells you something about the church because the church was able to reach people that worked in the hierarchy of Rome. So this person, Menaean, 
somehow heard the gospel and got saved, but he was brought up uh, in Herod's household, but he was a Roman person. So he was a real Gentile, you know, through and through, but he got saved. And then there was Saul, who was Paul. And Paul was a Jew, but he was like the elite Jew. He was like, a, he was a Pharisee. He was legit. He was zealous. And, and so you have all these different people. And, and they're all under the category of prophets and teachers. And, uh, and they were praying, to, ministering together. So I think, I think in our culture, it would be important to pray for diversity in our churches. I mean, for people to come in here, let's say, that may be considered a minority, let's say. Maybe they're from South America, a country there, or Latin America, or they're from, they're from a country in Africa. And, and they're trying to find their way into a body of believers. That's the beauty of the American church. The American church should be a melting pot. And we should represent the community where the church is located. I don't know if you notice, our community is very integrated. We have a lot of different types of people around here. And the church should reflect that. Now, we can, we can do a few things like be friendly and encouraging and that sort of thing. But we need to pray that God would send in people that need to be in this church, regardless of where they come from. And so that's a big topic. So the topic is diversity. And a couple of things here. So, Charles, I think, are you ready? Yeah, come on. Do it again, because we have a few more to go through here. Go for it. Dear Lord, thank you for the diversity that the pastor spoke of. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to experience other cultures, other races, other nationalities, um, and even other languages. Um, we value diversity, and we want to pray that you help those that don't, that you help show them and guide their hearts in a manner that would help them embrace diversity. It is so important that people realize that the most important thing in our lives is our children and God. We all have a lot of things in common. We have a lot of things that are similar, regardless of race, regardless of culture, regardless of nationality, what language you speak. Everybody loves their children and everybody wants to see them do good. So. That being said, hopefully God will show these people that we need to put our differences aside and walk on a path that embraces our children, embraces love, and embraces God. The reason I feel like the church is so important is because it helps us realize that love Brotherhood, faithfulness is absolutely necessary in our lives, 100%. We pray that people of all ages, of all economic statuses, all educational statuses, we pray that all of these people can come together under one God and can love each other for the better of everybody, for the betterment of the entire world. We hope that people realize that when you are, have faith and you don't, you don't get hung up on the hard things that happen throughout life, that you are thankful for the things that you do have and that you're thankful for the blessings, the daily blessings that sometimes we miss. We pray that people recognize that we are, we all bleed the same blood. And Jesus bled for all of us. So we pray that everybody will come together as one, under one God, and show some love to each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Lord, uh, break, the, break down the walls that might separate us from, from ages, uh, from education levels, from uh, economic levels, um, just different statuses in life. Regardless, Lord, let us all recognize the fact we are one in Christ. And may there be unity, Lord. May there be great unity within this body. Lord, but anyway, bring in the lost. Bring in those from different cultures and different groups that need to be in church. Bring them here, Lord, according to your plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty. Okay, Patty, I'm going to call upon you to pray for this one. This will be under the topic of prayer and fasting. I want to pray about prayer and fasting. So Acts 13, verses 2 and 3. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and, led, and sent them away. So, uh, Patty, thank you for being here tonight. Oh, so you came in person. So these are some of the things to pray about, you know, as you, as you pray. Okay. okay. Lord, we thank you yes. that you are our ultimate example. Hallelujah. And Lord, you said when you fast, not if, but when. And Lord, we just pray that you'll help us to put aside the flesh and that we would develop the discipline of fasting and praying. Lord, help us. Help us to follow your example and the example that you've given us in your word and the examples of others that have done it. Help us, Lord, to set aside times, specific days and times when we can fast and pray, when we can take the time to spend in your presence. Lord, we pray that you'll help us to guard our seat at your feet. Lord, that we would guard it, that we would be disciplined, that we would not be distracted. And Lord, help us to incorporate fasting into our life. Lord, I pray that you would help and that you would draw people to the times of weekly prayer. There's a prayer meeting on Monday nights, Lord. I just pray that, that you would bring more people in to pray. And even for these meetings that have taken place this week, Lord, I pray that you'll draw more people in. And even if they're unable to drive here and come to the church, that they would find a place of prayer in their own homes and join us, Lord, for the many different categories, the many different things that we've been praying about. And Lord, we pray for the United Night of Prayer, the emphasis to increase and, and that greater involvement would be um, found. Lord, these times when the churches get together, I remember when we used to have it here every single month and how the different pastors would come from the different churches, and but then slowly it kind of, kind of diminished. But Lord, we just pray for an increase, that you'll draw more pastors, more people from the congregation together for the united night of prayer that the churches have in this area. Oh God, we thank you that you have given us the privilege to pray, that we have the freedom to pray in this country, Lord. We thank you, Lord that we can talk to you, that we can call upon you wherever we are. Whenever we need to, Lord, we can call upon you. We thank you, Lord, for prayer. And we thank you, Lord, that you'll help us as we discipline ourselves to fast. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray for my niece, Nadia. Father, we lift up Nadia to you. We just pray for her health in general, Lord. Touch her, bring healing and strength to her, Lord, and let her be well. Let, let her not miss any work. Uh, may your blessing be upon uh, her life at this time. 
and um, upon her sister and mom as well. So thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, we have a few more topics to pray about. And we have 35 minutes till 9, so I think, we'll, I think we're going to make it. We've got three more topics. Okay. Um, oh. All right, so the same scriptures, actually. Acts 13, 2 and 3, it says, Again, as they ministered to the Lord and, uh, and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And having fasted and prayed, they laid hands on them and sent them away, sent them out. So this topic would be missions-minded. And um, we support 35 missionaries, $50 a month. It adds up. And... Uh, we need to be praying for our, our pledge cards to be sufficient to cover that this year. Um, so we need to pray for <clears throat> not all of our missionaries. We're going to do that tomorrow night. But just pray in general for, for us to be a missions-minded church. We're, we're grateful. Uh, we sent Pastor Bill down to Common Ground. He's ministering there. Pastor Wayne ministers every Sunday morning down there at Common Ground. Um, other people, other North Point students have come here for a while, and we sent them out to their respective places. So we are a missions-minded church, for sure. Um, but we need to, to pray that that will continue. And I think maybe we could include on here uh, North Point Bible College, because North Point is a training ground for missionaries. So, uh, Josh, would you like to pray for this? I know you have kind of a heart for missions, right? Is something that, that's been on your heart? So lead us. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I say thank you for giving us time to be able to pray about missions and the, the point of what it means to be a missionary. As Apostle Paul was a well-known missionary and um, wrote pretty much half the New Testament. And uh, I just want to say I want to pray for uh, North Point. I want to pray for this uh, this school, to, to uh, for the students and the staff to strive to focus on um what it means to, to be a missionary and able to not just go across globally, but understand that the heart of missions is to reach out to the, to the lost, reach out to, the, reach out to a, a dark world that desperately needs you. And I just want to lift this school up. I want to pray for the students to work hard and have the drive to uh, continue to work hard in the studies and also to learn more about what it means to, to be led by Christ and able to, to, um, to be a missionary like Paul and Peter and John and able to kind of continue to walk in the faith and able to be bold in the faith and wherever they go across out of the country or even in the country, I pray that wherever they, they, they'll be led, they'll be humbled, they'll be, be obedient and bold to able to go on this path and able to continue to share the gospel for the lost. Um, I want to pray for new life as well. They, we, um, we fundraise and uh, send out a bunch of missionaries all across the nation, and I want to pray for this church as we um, we go through have the the money and able to the ability to help help these missionaries get on their feet and go across the globe. Um, I know there's many students in North Point that come to this uh, this church, and we help them out, able to support them financially. And I pray that we do help them support them financially. And if there's a will, there's a way. And I know, Lord, that. Um, you'll find a way for them to help to go if they're called to do it. Then praise God that they're able to go and share the gospel with, um, with just broken people that with people that need you, Lord. And um, on a personal level, I myself have done that in the past, and um, done orphan ministry down Honduras. And I say it was an amazing experience, able to share the gospel with people with orphanage with orphanage down there. And I would say thank I say thank you for giving that time on a personal level, and. Um, but help you understand what it means to go. It's not just going across to Honduras or going out to Africa or India. It's really a point about reach out to the need. And um, I say thank you for giving us the opportunity to, to do this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Speaking of missions, 
Um, I want to pray for our local missions efforts here in Haverhill. Um, we call them parachurch organizations, but Father, we, we lift up to you Common Ground Ministries. Bless them, Lord, with, with the funding they need, with the workers they need to make a difference in the lives of so many homeless and disenfranchised people. Uh, bless that work, Lord, that people can be fed good food, have a place to stay during the daytime, and uh, just have a place of fellowship, Lord. Bless it and let it do what it's set out to do. We pray, Lord, for Somebody Cares New England as well, as they, uh, as they pre uh, prepare food for the community and uh, a place of worship as well. Bless their labors, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for um, Leaving the Streets Ministry, our brother Jesus and his wife Wanda Ruiz. Bless their efforts, Lord, to, to meet the youth of our city, many of which are uh, in uh, tangled life situations. We pray, Lord, that you would help this ministry not only reach into the gang world, but just into the world of young people in general that need some stability in their lives. We pray, Lord, for uh, New Brothers Fellowship, continued blessing over Brother Doug Gregan and his wife Caroline as they go into the prisons and, and also provide aftercare ministry. We pray, Lord, for Salvation Army, just blessings over that ministry, as well as uh, Pregnancy Care Center. Lord, bless that work as they minister faithfully to, uh, to ladies and, and uh, children and the fathers of the children as well. Bless their labors, O oh God. These are all great missions work right here in our own backyard. So we just pray blessings over them and provision for them as well. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, we have two more. <laughs> okay, oh, this is, a, okay, this is back in Acts 11. Acts 11, verses 25 and 26. Oh, I must have skipped this one before. Okay, it says, um, when, uh, when Barnabas found Saul, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church, and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Um, so the, the idea here is to find our identity. Um, Barnabas went to find Saul. Uh, Saul, of course, is Paul. And uh, Saul found his place as a teacher. So we want, we want to help people find their identity. I'll pray for this one. Father, Lord, we thank you for the examples we see in your word about what a New Testament church is like. But we do pray, Lord, for identity of our fellowship. We pray that we would, we would kind of hone in on a couple of key uh, things that we need to be doing, like preaching, like being evangelistic, uh, like being creative with uh, our worship team and drama and arts and that sort of thing. But, Lord, we just pray that, uh, that New Life would have a... a uh, be aware of our unique place in our community. Lord, I know there's other churches in town that, that specialize in, in certain areas of ministry. Um, Renaissance Church, uh, they, they really focus on drama and arts. And we thank you for that. Bless them in their labors. Uh, the, um, the River Church really focuses on... Uh, on kind of going deeper and having seminars and being studious. And that's good. Lord, bless them in that. But Lord, for New Life, we just pray that we would be a church that really is outreach-oriented. Let us be true to our calling as a, as a place where people grow, grounded in the Word, outreach-oriented, uh, building relationships and worshiping with passion. Lord, I pray that, that the sermon I shared on Sunday would ring true throughout the whole year that we would be a fellowship that's totally Christ-centered and word-bound and action-oriented. Lord, help us to, to stay in the word and focused. Uh, so we just ask you, Lord, let, let new life arise this year in a special way. And uh, as we go along, 
Let, us, let me, let others have some clarity as to what our specific callings will be. I, I know, Lord, in the past, it's been, it's been raising up and sending out people. Maybe that will return again. I don't know. But we just pray that you would help us see that this is a part of where we need to focus. What is our specialty? What, what do we do really well? And what, what do we do effectively? So help us, Lord, with that. In Jesus' name, I pray. All right, we got one more. Sandy, you up for it? This will be under the heading of stability. Acts 14, 26 to 28. Uh, let's see. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work which they had completed. Now when they had come and gathered the churches together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they stayed there a long time with the disciples. This kind of summarizes the last part of Paul's, of the missions trip, that they went out and they ministered and they came back to their home base. And their home base was a place of stability. They came back to the church of Antioch. So in Acts 13, they sent them out. And Acts, in Acts, at the end of Acts 14, they came back to Antioch and gave a report. So I, I say this is a place that there was stability. Uh, they were stable in what they believed and what they did. And uh, people felt comfortable coming back to report what great things God had done through them. So Sandy, why don't you come and uh, lead us in this category as well. Thank you. Lord, I just thank you for this church. Thank you that we have the privilege and the honor to be able to come and have a place that's home, yes. a place that's stable in you, that yes. we know we can come here and grow and learn and hear truth. Yes, Lord, Lord I yes, thank Lord. you for our shepherds, pastor and sister, and thank Pamela, you, Sister Pamela, and I thank you for them and their calling and their blessing and their faithfulness, Lord, thank to you, lead Jesus. us and to shepherd us that we can be in this place of stability and of safety and know that we're loved and we're accepted here. Thank you, and Lord, thank, thank you, you for you. the leadership of this church who Hallelujah. has a heart for missions and outreach, but also love for those that are in here. Yes, 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 Lord. Thank I pray Jesus. for those, Lord, who are called here, who maybe feel Jesus. a little hurt, or maybe really hurt, mm. and left out, or whatever. That's a lie of the enemy. Even if something happened yes, to make you feel that way, it was to drive you out like a sheep that the wolf wants to get by itself to pick it off. Come back into the fold. Let's Jesus. work it out. Let's make things right. And Lord, help us to do it biblically yes, and Lord. the right way so that we can be a body that's tightly knit together, that we can have the good relationships and practices of working out our Christianity, yes, yes, just like Lord. a child that's learning to walk stumbles and falls. You don't help beat us, the child or cast the child out. You love it and help it and accept it and encourage it. And Lord, that's what Pastor and Pamela do for us. They are always there to help us and encourage us and to teach us in truth, even in the hard things like finances. Mm. Sometimes that can be hard, Lord. But yes. there is a stability and there is a focus that you want to do in our finances, in our lives, not only the church and what the church does with finances, but what we do as individuals, mm. Lord, with yes. you. Yes. Help us, Lord, to find that um, 
digging Jesus. out the truth of your word. As pastor preaches scripture by scripture by scripture, there's so much richness in there, so you, much growth, and that we can Thank build you, our lives on these building blocks of stability of your word, God, yes. here yes. in this church, so that we'll be ready and prepared to go out Yes, wherever Lord. our mission field is. And Lord, we all are missionaries and we all have a mission field. Whether it's you're a mother with little ones, then go in the nursery and minister to somebody. Or maybe when you're food shopping, smile and tell yes. the clerk that God loves them and that yes, Jesus yes, is there yes, for them. Yes, yes, and Lord. invite people oh, to come Lord. to the plays or the outreaches or the different things so that they yes. can see that this church is a church Jesus. that has stability and that they can Jesus. be confident and Jesus. grow and learn and have their calling, Lord. I love that our, our identity as a church is grow. I love it. Thank I'm so you, thankful for it and thankful that I could be here. Thank you, Lord, help us to live out our callings even in the littlest of things. Yes, Part of my callings has always been teaching and puppets and i started with one little puppet on my hand talking to kids and i just love lord that that Jesus. calling has stayed with me all these Thank years you, let it Thank grow you, and let it uh, pass on to others as well yes, lord. and lord help yes, us lord. to be faithful in always letting our light shine for you and letting us carry out the gospel yes, help lord. us to have these building blocks of stability yes, going to church tithing, reading, praying, yes. listening to godly music Amen. and telling others about you, Lord, um, you, witnessing, giving our testimony, looking on the bright side, even for things we don't like, Lord. Jesus. I pray that you will help us yes, unite Lord. together, encourage one another, and grow in one another, and that we can have stability in our spiritual family here at New Life. Lord, we can't pick our family, and we can't pick our spiritual family either. But Pastor and Pamela are good, faithful, loving, spiritual parents to us here at New Life, and I thank you for them. Are they perfect? No. None of us are, but we love them, and they're in a position of authority that we love and respect and honor them, and we know that we will be blessed and led by them through God because he has established the family, the family in this church. And if, Lord, those that are, were called to this church and have left for some reason, Lord, bring them back. Heal them, Lord. Help them to know that, if you keep running, it's not going to get better because we have to work things out spiritually and scripturally. And when you have an offense against somebody, you have to do it in a godly way. And if you don't know what that is, we can help you because Pastor and Pamela will teach us according to the word. And I'm so thankful for that that it's according to the word, not popular opinion or the way the culture is, Lord, but the way you intended it to be. And I thank you for that, and I want that in my life. I want that in the church. I want it in our community. We need it, even in America, Lord. Help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I think what we're going to do right now is uh, close out the live stream. So let me say a prayer to close out the live stream. Then those that are here, just for a few minutes, I want to get together and talk to you and pray for you before we go home. But we, we could all stand right now. Why don't we do that? Those at home, it's our closing prayer for you. And uh, thank you for joining us on the live stream. Father, thank you for our live stream church family. Thank you that they could participate in this tonight from their homes or wherever they are. Father, every prayer request we gave to you, we leave it in your hands, Lord. Let it be done according to your perfect will and your perfect time. But thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you, Lord, for moving in our hearts during this last hour and a half or so. Uh, and we look with expectancy, Lord, as to what you're going to do now that we've prayed all these things. Let us be a church like Antioch. That's all these different characteristics in play. Let us be effectively proclaiming and living the word of God. 
So thank you, Lord, and thank you for this night. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.